So we're here at the example table, and in this video we're going to look at examples of integration using trigonometric identities. So we have two basic strategies. If we're given an integral with trig functions, we want to try to rewrite a product as a sum, if possible, or rewrite it so that we can make a useful substitution. So let's start right away with an example. So here, let's look at the integral of sine squared x dx. And as always, when I say integral here, it's indefinite. So what I really mean is almost the same thing as antiderivative. So sine squared x dx. Well, the thing that might jump out at you as being the most obvious is to rewrite sine squared as 1 minus cosine squared. But then we'll have to deal with a cosine squared, which is just as bad as dealing with a sine squared. So the problem here is that sine is being squared, and we don't have a nice cosine, say, sitting out front, which would enable us to make a u substitution. So we have, though, a trig identity that lets us rewrite sine squared without the square. And that is 1 minus cosine 2x all over 2. So this is one of the identities, sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine 2x all over 2. So if we rewrite this, this is the integral of 1 half minus 1 half cosine 2x dx. And this is 1 half x, right, this 1 half part gives us a 1 half x, and then minus 1 half times the antiderivative of cosine 2x. Now the antiderivative of cosine 2x is going to involve a sine of 2x. And when we take the derivative of whatever, so we're looking for this coefficient here. When we take the derivative of whatever this is, we want to get cosine 2x. Well, normally the derivative of sine 2x would give us 2 so, uh, cosine 2x. So to cancel that 2, we need an extra 1 half. So our antiderivative, or integral of sine squared x dx is 1 half x minus 1 half times 1 half sine 2x plus c. Let's look at another example. So instead of sine squared this time, let's try sine cubed x dx. Well, we could rewrite that so one sine squared within here the way we just did, but it's probably not as useful because now we have three copies of sine. And so one of the useful things we can do here is take one of them out. So we have sine x times sine squared x dx. And remember last time, in the previous example, and I said that sine squared alone is difficult because we don't have something like a cosine sitting in front so we can make a u substitution. Well, here, we'll make it happen. We have now a copy of sine. Let's rewrite sine squared as 1 minus cosine. So here, we have sine x times 1 minus cosine squared x dx we can now let u be cosine. So u equals cosine x, du equals negative sine x dx, which means that positive sine x dx equals negative du. So in terms of u, we have sine x dx, that becomes negative du, so let's just put a negative and then integral sine. And 1 minus cosine squared becomes 1 minus u squared. So this is 1 minus u squared du. This we can now find the antiderivative of. We get u cubed over 3 minus u. So we have a minus minus u squared, so this really becomes the integral of u squared minus 1, which gives us this thing, plus c. So let's replace u with what we set it equal to, namely cosine. 
So this is cosine cubed x over 3 minus cosine x plus c. Let's look at one more example. Let's now do something with secants and tangents. So let's look at the integral of secant cubed x times tangent the seventh x dx. Now strategy is going to be similar. We have a nice identity that relates secant squared and tangent squared that we want to try to use. And we also have a relationship between the derivatives of secant and tangent. So the derivative of secant is secant times tangent. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. So we just have to figure out how to make it work in this case. So we want to find either a copy of the derivative of secant or a copy of the derivative of tangent. And we have one of each. So we could factor out a copy of secant and one copy of tangent. Then we have a copy of the derivative of secant. Or we can factor out two copies of secant and have a copy of the derivative of tangent. Now, the problem with factoring out two copies of secant is that we'll be left with only one copy of secant, and we can't easily rewrite that in terms of tangent. We'd want something like secant squared. So our strategy is instead going to be to factor out a copy of the derivative of secant. So that will leave us with secant squared x tangent to the sixth x times secant x tangent x dx. All right, so here is our derivative of secant. Now, tangent to the sixth, this, this is equal to tangent squared x cubed. And we can rewrite tangent squared in terms of secant. So this integral becomes the integral of secant squared x times tangent to the sixth x, which is tangent squared x cubed. And tangent squared is secant squared x minus 1. So this first part becomes secant squared x times secant squared x minus 1 cubed times secant x tangent x dx. Now we can make a u substitution. So u is going to be secant x. du is secant x tangent x dx. So this integral becomes the integral of u squared times u squared minus 1 cubed du. If we expand this, this becomes the integral of u to the eighth minus 3u to the sixth plus 3u to the fourth minus u squared. So we can expand this just like any other polynomial. So we can now find the antiderivative of each term. So we get u to the ninth over 9 minus 3 sevenths u to the seventh plus 3 fifths u to the fifth minus 1 third u cubed plus c. And finally, if we substitute uh, secant x back in for u, we get secant to the ninth x over 9 minus 3 sevenths secant to the seventh x plus 3 fifths secant to the fifth x minus 1 third secant cubed x and finally plus c.